welcome to Rod and Style Radio. This is Lane sitting with Sama. Hi. And we have John and Jess on today's episode with us. This episode, Sama, who's it brought it to us by? It's brought to us by Johnny Chop Customs in Leander, Texas. For all your custom needs, you can find them at Johnny Chop Customs on Facebook and then I believe so on Instagram as well. If not, you will be able to find our info in our post. Stay tuned. You're listening to Rod and Style Radio, the latest podcast brought to you by RodandStyle.com, which is where you can find links for merch, videos from our YouTube channel, along with stories and tech talk from some of the greatest folks in the culture. So grab the wheel, it's about to get wild. You've tuned in to Rod and Style. What's going on, John? Hey, how you doing? We're doing pretty good out here. Awesome. Hi. You hearing us good? <laughs> yep, we can both hear you good. Jess is here. Come on over, Jess. Hi. Awesome. Jess, what's going on? The usual, you know. <laughs> <laughs> living, living the life. Living the dream. <laughs> living the life of her rock star life that she does. Yeah. <laughs> of course. John and Jess are back on Rod and Style Radio with us. That's awesome, man. Y'all have already knocked out uh, with a Motor Mania. It's done. So how'd it go? Well, Motor Mania, Motor Mania Wisconsin's done for oh. sure, which we'll get into that for sure. And um, I'm not sure if you've been following, but Jess, you want to tell them the news that we kind of got called out by some more Southerners? We're taking the show south, baby. Really? Where are y'all headed? Yeah, we, we just don't know where quite yet, but it's going to be south of our border. Well, I mean, it, Wisconsin, everything's south, right? I know. <laughs> it's very vague, but it's accurate. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, as you know, we had um, the show went fantastic. I mean, we, um, as you know, we had uh, Scratch and Chuck and, you know, uh, Rod and Custom and, and Cheers of cheer Culture up here with. Of course, custom custom Colette brought it all together for us. You know, we thank her so much for everything she's done. She's a good friend of ours, and uh, we brought the Automotive Hall of Enchantment, which would which we put together in about forty days, babe. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a soft opening, something we brought new up here to our huge world of motor mania. But it was it was really well accepted out here, and um, you know the, the boys had fun and everybody had fun. We got some three hundred foot street drags in with them and. It, it really went good. We had rain on Saturday, but all in all, we had almost 20,000 come through the gates in three days. So it was a big Holy day. Holy crap. <laughs> wow, 20,000 in three days. I saw you also made the uh, front page of the newspaper. Yeah, it's um, it's 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 still surreal to us that, um, you know, I mean, well, to me, I started this, you know, on a little napkin, you know, years ago. And in three years, it became this overnight phenomenon. Uh, you know, it's now it's. People want us to bring us to, to, to their states, you know. So it's it's going good. It's going really good. We we were so Sunday was Sunday was almost ten thousand. Yes. I think they came it through the gates. So. Yeah, over uh, on Sunday it was just it was a madhouse. It was great. We had a lot of fun and we did the drags with got the boys and uh, Chuck and Scratch and um, had some crazy televised stuff out there and monster truck parade. And, you know, we throw everything by the kitchen sink in our shows and people love it. <laughs> well we did follow quite a bit of it since uh sam and i weren't able to be there in person uh, we were following all the posts of uh the cars that were coming in and the the monster trucks as they came in you had bigfoot out there uh you know it looked like it was an absolute just awesome festival but uh i'm i'm excited to hear that y'all are going to be uh moving into multiple cities with this now so you know, possibly, you know, another show in the South and then, you know, who knows where it goes from there. Well, we've got, um, yeah, and I'll elaborate on that is we've got, uh, good friends of ours that I got to know really well in the, um, you know, years past, I mean, I did street racing for years on the streets and got to know a lot of great street racers over the years. And, uh, Anthony and Bobby Smith of, uh, Hercules street racing, um, they are, uh, Jonesboro, Arkansas, I believe it is. Okay. We brought them up in 2020, um, and they were part of a couple TV shows called uh, Street Outlaws on the History Channel, of course, you know? Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, I remember Street Outlaws. 
Yep, they were part of the Memphis Free Outlaws, and he was on there in 2020 during COVID. Like you know, we talked in the last podcast that we were on. Um, the world was shut down, and these people, you know, they called me up and said, "Hey, we'd love to come to your show. We'd never been in Wisconsin before." And as you get to know me, I'm a risk taker, as everybody knows. And I said, "Well, bring up all your buddies." So we brought four Memphis Street Outlaws up to Wisconsin, and nobody's ever even seen these guys except on TV during 2020. Yeah, and they're a hit, and uh, so they've been part of my show ever since. And Anthony and Bobby are ones that stuck out, got to be really good friends with them, always talked to them, and. We, I told him I'd like to really do a 300 foot street drag on at the fairgrounds, which is crazy. And the town chairman told me I was nuts to bring a a 300 foot street race on a fairground, but I said I can do it, you know, because <laughs> let let's face it, some of the other shows that you know you guys do, or some of the great shows like uh, Vintage Torque Thrust, it's all in the dirt, you know, and you got some flathead Fords doing you know maybe 40 miles an hour, so it's it's a harmless thing on a fairground, but sure. I, of course, wanted to bring 2,000 horsepower cars to my fairgrounds and go 300 feet, and you know, which is crazy. And my insurance company told me I was nuts, but <laughs> hey, guess what? It, it it went off without a hitch. We put our safety team together, and we had one of the fastest cars in the country, Anthony Smith, go up against our fastest car in the tri-state area up here, uh, Troy Nichols' car. We call it Abby Normal. It's a, a high seven-second streetcar Mustang. It goes you know, five feet up in the air, stands in the bumper out the gate, and they did a heads-up race on the internet, and it, just, it went nuts on all over, all, over so, all over social media. It was crazy. Oh, that sounds and wild. It was wild, and Anthony and Bobby said goodbye on the strip, told everybody goodbye on Sunday, and I believe it was two days later, they were did a Facebook Live, and they called us out and told us to bring Motor Mania South, and they called me out. <laughs> so there, <laughs> there it starts. So we just got to call you out. All right. That, that's all we got to do to get you to come down to Texas, I guess. Yeah, he's easy like that. <laughs> I, I'm easy. Hence the woman sitting in my bed right now. <laughs> oh, 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 sorry, all fans and followers. We're actually sitting in our bed with the dog right now talking to you. So, <laughs> hey, that's where we do most of our podcasting from. Why you got to sell us out like that? Like, nobody knows these things. <laughs> Right. I mean, you know, I mean, it's, you know, it's nothing crazy. I mean, you know, I mean, I got a thing of Oreos sitting here, but that's what I'm doing. But <laughs> yeah, but now, so they called us out and two days later, Jim Kramer from Bigfoot called us out and it's just, then it kind of went crazy. I sat and thought about it for a while. I thought, how do I answer the call? And yesterday we did a, I did a Facebook live in my shop and all by myself and I answered the call and told them we're coming. We're ready. So Man, that does sound awesome. I'm I'm excited to see how all of that goes. What else do you have going on, man? Like I know that y'all were gearing up real hard for Motor Mania, and then you know now that it's now that it's behind us, the first one you know with the the Automotive Hall of Enchantment is that what they called it? Yes. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah, it was something we just threw together real quick. Yeah, and, uh, and looking forward to doing it again yep. next year. Yep. Yeah, Chuck came back uh came back to Texas and he was like y'all have to be at the one next year. It, it yeah. was it was short notice for us to get off from work this year. Uh yep. so next year Chuck was like you're going next year like it's not a question. <laughs> or we could bring it down to Texas. I mean, these are facts. Or both. <laughs> we could do both. Both yeah. sound better. Right. The custom couple goes on tour. <laughs> well, you know, Chuck was Chuck. Chuck and Scratch knew that we had a building for them, and Colette didn't know the size of it. Because as everybody knows, once I do things up here, and now Jess is my you know right hand woman here, side by side here, we go big or go home. It's what we do. So I think they were a little overwhelmed when they pulled in on Wednesday night. I think they got here, and they had no idea the building was almost thirty thousand square feet that I gave them. Wow. He's like, well, I didn't know it was this big. And I said, and he goes, he goes, I didn't, he goes, I really didn't think because you, you know, when you're online, I tell everybody it's 150 acre fairgrounds. People think it's 150 acres of parking lots. No, I mean, I really rent out 150 acres. The only ones in 20 years rent the whole grounds out and we try to fill it up with stuff. Um, and we had over 50,000 square feet of indoor showcase. We gave them 25 and my muscle car and monster guys had the other half and they were, they were overwhelmed with it at first, and it, and then 
he goes next year he goes i will fill this thing and, and chuck and scratch and call out were there there and they handled it really good they wanted to keep their their um their heritage and, and what we could do with the rod and custom culture and uh, i think they did really good you know it was really great no, I, we saw a lot of the the cars that they brought into there, and, and I mean, just absolutely beautiful examples of hot rods and custom cars. You know, everything that just fits that whole bill. Uh, you know, I think Chuck uh, and Scratch. I think they were posting to all of the pages as each of the cars was coming in. Uh, I know Scratch shared a really cool uh, chopped Oldsmobile that was just. I mean, it was killer uh, to yeah, see something like that. Yeah, it was the black like and that. red one. Yeah, it was black and red, yep. so Sam I remembered that right away. Yep. <laughs> yep, those are, some our, those are some of our friends up here in Wisconsin. That was um, uh, the Retarded Sparks. Uh, I believe that's their club up here. And they, they came in from the south side, and we're trying to bring different genres in there so we all kind of blend together because, you know, we all love every part of these this culture and everything we can do with a motor. That's how we branded Motor Mania, and, it really worked out well where everybody thought the street racers were just going to do their own thing with their newer Mustangs or their, you know, their race cars. And, you know, there's a bunch of videos actually, I think on the front page, you saw Jess doing the arm drop with mm-hmm. Chuck, uh, Brandon Von Elrod in the, in the, um, in a couple of the buckets there doing a couple arm drop races and it was great. And, you know, they had a lot of fun. And next thing you know, Chuck was bringing every car to the showroom that he could bring in, you know, to go racing. <laughs> so they had a lot of fun. They had an awful lot of fun doing it. Well, one thing that I appreciated about the 300 foot drags was that everyday people with everyday drivers and, you know, were, were running their vehicles too. It was really exciting to see everybody get involved and just have a great time. That always is fun, you know, because you don't get a lot of chances to do that and, you know, a lot of chances to see what your car might do. Uh, even when it's not going to do anything more than about 55 miles an hour, sometimes it is just fun to just like get on it straight away and just open it up as hard as you possibly can. So Absolutely. I know, I know Sam does that on the highway here when she's not supposed to. <laughs> Why are you just throwing me out there today? Like, I don't know what I did. Like, I didn't know I burned your food or some shit, but man, you always got to throw me under the bus. <laughs> Damn. Well, no, the fastest the fastest I ever went down was when your Model A, and I think I was going like 100, 105 in it. And yeah. we didn't know that it can go that high, but I tested it. <laughs> yeah, it was sketchy. It wasn't on I-35, was it? It was what? what? It wasn't on I-35, was it? No, it no. was on uh, Loop 410 here in San Antonio. Okay. We, we had just gotten off of I-35. Yeah, I was like, all right, now I can gun it. <laughs> <laughs> No, because you because you do remember, you know, you have a a Texas kind of Texas kind of native over here that lived down there for a while, so it's to come back. It's to come back. So <laughs> that's one of the things when I said we're gonna go south, and she's like, "We're going to Texas, right?" And I'm like, I, I said, "That's I south." Don't know. I mean, these are facts. That's south. Yep. yep. Head these on down. Facts. We we would love to have you, and I'm sure that we can find some kind of space here in Texas. <laughs> it, oh, it, it, it's not a small place. No, it's not a small place, and we've. You know, it's an elaborate on the traveling south thing. It's uh, we've got um, I don't know if you guys ever met or talked with Brandon at all. Brandon Von Elrod, he's a great guy to Pacific Missouri. Um, really big in the rod and custom culture area, and does a lot of stuff with Butch Patrick and all those guys. And um, he, you know, he and I have been talking about doing some stuff, collaborating together, and we're doing a couple of things with social media and a couple of shows that we're putting together now. It's it's really branching off a lot and he's the one that wanted us to bring it to Florida next year in spring, which we got to go do some negotiation with Don Garlitz, uh, bring it to his museum in, in spring. I think we're going. And, um, so it's, so it's really neat that to actually get this thing off the ground in less than three years to get the actual attention that we've been doing since day one. And now in three years that people want to take us, take it on the road. So it's a lot of fun. And we just are so happy to be involved and meet people like you too. And, everybody else that's getting involved in it. So we just have a lot of fun with it. We're blessed. Oh no, absolutely. Like we talked about in the, the last time y'all were on the show, y'all kicked off this idea right when the world was shutting down and you know, you still made it happen and you still made some, you know, uh, some shows work out for you. And then to put this one on this year, uh, you know, and just see how the success behind it and then to see that, you know, folks really do want it to grow. I've been telling some, you know, a lot of the people we've talked with, 
that you know now that covid is kind of going away and it's kind of becoming a normal thing again and people are just getting that cabin fever and wanting to get out i've seen a lot you know a lot of people wanting to put on more shows and put on more cruise nights and more you know just a little bit more of everything and like people have now seen you know how quick everything can just go away so like i'm seeing a lot of people wanting to go out more you know because you don't know you know what what's going to shut us down next time and then you're not going to be able to cruise your cars around or whatever it's going to be lately it's been gas prices keeping us from cruising well and that's 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 just it we had a we did an interview the other day and um somebody just you know the which we got we got of course great props for doing that too is that since we started this whole idea you know we've kind of had some things thrown at us you know the first year was was covid and we just said no we're staying alive we're going to do it anyways last year we had all these things going on and covid kind of releasing but we took a big risk and brought some big hair bands anyways and then we got slammed with four days of rain but we didn't I, you know i never give up and i'm like this this will still work and then this year i had all these celebrities booked in and I was just like, oh man, this is going to be great. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the gas prices doubled in four months, you know, and yep. we're bringing people from all over the country. I mean, you know, look at Scratch and Chuck that came all the way from Texas and a lot of my big names, Bigfoot and High Roller and all the big mop truck guys, they come from Iowa and Missouri and everything else. So all those gas prices and plus hotels up here, good Lord, we spent, I don't even know, was it over 20 probably yeah. over, over 20,000 just in our hotels for our celebrities. Wow. In four days. Yeah, I mean we we go big or go home. We we comp everybody and we we make sure they're taken care of. But it's a big risk to take, and you know it paid off. And plus, we wanted to make sure that our public, our fans, and our followers are giving something back. So our our sponsors stepped their plate, and I must thank a lot of them for doing that. From anywhere from Air Technologies to O'Reilly Auto Parts to our local radio stations up here, one zero two nine The Hog, Charisma Customs, all these great great people tso interiors and jason stundall and well, they helped us lower the ticket gate price to only eight dollars for general admission five dollars for show cars oh wow and, that is low yeah and it was only and then it, even if you put five dollars in for your car to come in the show it was 10 bucks to race all day long on the 300 foot street drags nonstop. so and that gets you that eight dollar or five dollar mission gets you in you know that's 10 hours of whatever it is of our show with bands burnout pits drags you know showcases it's 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 a lot to put together but as just now tell you our staff is so amazing our the young the young we have you know young and old people older people working for us but they just never give up they just they have so much fun doing it. the adrenaline is there from start to finish and that's that's i would not have made it this far without them oh yeah no it, especially with uh with large events like this you know, your your support staff is everything. Absolutely. We've put on shows down here that, you know, just you couldn't you couldn't do it by yourself. It, it, there's no possible way. So, you know, the fact that, you know, you can recognize that that your support staff is doing a whole lot for you. And it sounds like they just absolutely kick some ass this year. So we're we're stoked oh. to see how it all went. It's yeah, it's fun. And Jess will, you know, you can own about the, the staff and Jess's daughter, uh, Zyler, we call her red. And, um, my daughter, Elizabeth biz that, um, they, those two just rock. They, they just, they do everything so great. And they're, they're literally our right hand little girl, our girls, you know, yeah, well, they're, one's not so little anyway. they're not so little 20 and 15, but they're, uh, they're, they're all business when they get into it. It's, it's great to see it. I mean, they just, they don't screw around. Yeah. We don't have a large staff. Um, we have a small number, but every one of them is dedicated and they have a lot of heart and they're, they, they just give their all in everything that, uh, they do and what we ask of them. We really honestly could not do it without them. And that is so awesome. How did, uh, how wild did your, uh, burnout pits get this year? <laughs> well it was uh we called them out and again across the country we got um we're one of the biggest cash payouts over five thousand dollars in prizes gave away on saturday night and we had some people coming for that money for adam kelly's adam kelly won it last year he was my champion last year of uh it's called boosted ride racing and his truck's called the death trap <laughs> and it's about a 1500 horsepower 69 
uh, Ford short box, all tube chassis with just a big motor stick, alcohol injected, methanol injected motor. And, uh, you know, just to grenade the tires off. And we had our judges out there and people that had no idea what was coming. And these people did not give up till they got, a, they got that prize. And <laughs> I mean, there, but you can watch our videos. I don't know if you saw them yet, but it was, I mean, they smoked out everybody. There was rubber flying. The people's eyes were watering. I mean, and they were loving it. It was great. I was going to say that my eyes were burning and I was peppered with tire debris and I ate a lot of smoke, but I wouldn't have had other way it was awesome <laughs> <laughs> it oh, was- I, I know exactly what you're talking about too because i have been right in the middle of all of that in some of the burnout because you're trying to be the cameraman that's I, why yeah trying to capture oh. the the coolest <laughs> you know part of you know everything going on and then you know there's always that really cool scene where you can see the car and then you can't because of all the smoke that's coming and yeah. you yep. always try yep. to get that when yeah in being the camera guy for so many years, I I know that smell and I know the feel of the that uh, rubber hitting you as well. <laughs> and, and exactly, and we had it was because uh, Saturday night is when we kicked off our burnout contest, and you had a lot of you know guys bringing their their girls or their wives or girlfriends wherever or first dates there, and they're all dressed up. They're you know their skirts or tanks, and they were they were in the crowd. And I thought I saw a couple of them were there, and I'm like, oh man, she's got a white top on. She's got this is gonna get covered. And, you know, I'm, you know, you wait to see the reaction. Either they're gonna love it or they hate it. There is no middle ground, and, uh, <laughs> right? And, when you see them scurry, <laughs> and you know the crowd, the the stands were packed, and a couple of cars took off. And I think it was this guy with his F two fifty, just uh, turbo diesel, and he would not stop. He just kept going. We tried to stop him, but he was having too much fun. <laughs> we we could yeah, you know, it was a complete whiteout. You couldn't see. You can put your hand in front of your face. That's how white it was. The whole, I mean, like it was crazy. Wow. And um, I mean, and that was for like usually we get one or two runs like that. There was about eight runs like that that were just solid, complete whiteouts. It was crazy. And um, we came through, and every after the first run, I thought, okay, the stands will clear out. And nope, as soon as they've got the smoke cleared up, because we had, luckily we had a good Wisconsin wind going on, so it took all the smoke away right away afterwards. And the stands were getting more packed every time somebody would go through, and I, they were just cheering them on. And I'm like, "This is great. This is what I want to see." And they they stayed through after the burnout contest. They stayed for the rain, and they went to we raced till ten o'clock at ten thirty at night on Saturday night. So it was it was it was crazy, but it, it, they love it. I mean, people love what we're doing. So yeah, that is so cool. I've been in I've been in some stands like that for some races where uh, the crowds are just so into it that it's almost a contest between how loud the crowd can get over the engines of the cars. And, you know, it, the more people that are getting into those stands and the more excited everybody is getting, like, it's just, you know, that energy throughout the, the evenings, you, you know, I've, I've been in some crowds like that, and that's awesome. So I, I'm looking forward to seeing more uh, footage from the show because we saw everything as it was happening and I haven't gone back and seen any of the updates uh, since Chuck messaged me actually he messaged me pictures of the uh, the newspaper because uh, he was all excited about that that y'all made the newspaper and everything so that was really cool and then uh, right after he did I think you sent me the messages of you know y'all being in the newspaper so yeah, it's just so cool how big this show got, and I'm excited to see how it grows from here. Yeah, it's we did, um, and this is actually the, I think. Well, yeah, last year when we made the front page shoot, didn't we? Last I year, think so. yeah, last year I think last year they put us in the paper two, two days in a row. I think it was. Um, and yeah, go ahead, Jess. Uh, we've added something to our website called Motormania Media, where people can log on and upload their own videos and pictures, and that can take place over the next couple of weeks. And our team's going to go through them and start posting them up. So you'll see them um, in the next coming weeks and mon- months here. Uh, new stuff pop up on our Facebook page. And where can they find that? What's the name of the Facebook page? So our Facebook is is. Uh, motor motor mania just regular motor mania is our facebook page okay but if you, if you go to our what do you call it a qr <laughs> what is the qr code the qr code if you see it on our on the computer or anything you can actually scan that and this this is you know austin dorzak that's my media guy and um he he actually does nothing but they get motor mania has gotten so big we actually had to branch off and start motor mania media and austin does nothing 
but work for Motor Mania Media now full time, just uploading our videos every single day. The kid works for us nonstop all year long. That's what he does now. Oh, that's and awesome. We it it just got it just blew up overnight, like we were saying. So we actually have five entities now. So we have um, Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, Instagram, and TikTok. Right? I think it is. Those are all our entities, and there's followers like crazy on all these things, and it's just. It, it, you know, and they're, they're asking for apparel. They're asking for this stuff. So we're having a lot of fun with it. But, yeah, if you go, and then, of course, our main website is themotormania.com. That's where Jess is saying you can go and you find Motormania Media, and you. you can upload your videos. And, you know, we've already got, there's a couple hundred videos on there. There's thousands of pictures on there already. It's just, it's going crazy, and we're having a lot of fun with it. I just I just uploaded mine today. A little <laughs> bit, but they're in there. Yep. It's, and people are sharing People are sharing. It's so fun to see, like, Jim and Julie Kramer from the, you know, the, the Bigfoot clan uploading their media and, you know, Chuck and Scratch uploading theirs. And it's just great to see celebrities doing it, you know, that, that are following us and wanting us to go out and calling us out and having so much fun so we can bring, you know, people like you on board and having a lot of fun. And we can we can run shows there and have you up here. And it's just we really want to be this a destination and bring the whole I don't know, the whole hobby back together again, if that makes any sense. That's what I always wanted to do. That was always my dream. Yeah. No, I, absolutely. You know, uh, it would be a great time, especially for us to be able to go to places and, and you know, where y'all are setting up and start interviewing people, you know, as they're bringing their cars in or, you know, any of you, the, the features that you've got coming, you know, any of the celebrities that you've got coming, you know, we could, we could record podcasts for weeks weeks worth of content in a weekend <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah and that's you know we got some great announcements coming up too where we want to get you guys involved and you know brandon and i are gonna um we're gonna be announcing that and we got some other things to do but um they want us to do a tour of route 66 and uh um, whatever car we find out of a barn just brandon and i get the gopros and going for a ride and doing that on, on live facebook every day and just going for rides so people can follow it and tune in every morning. So there's there's a lot of things that we have going on that's just it's exploding every day and we just have it's just what I can what I can put through and what I can all handle. <laughs> right. And, uh, of course, you know, whatever whatever Jess tolerates me to do too. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever whatever you gets. better not do without Jess is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I, I we have those same conversations. It's like, hey, I'm gonna go to this show, not without me. Yeah, duh, no shit. <laughs> well, I, I'm I'm learning. I'll go ahead. Babe. I made a mistake the other day. I was saying some baloney, like, well, you know, I think it's a good idea if we don't do all the shows together. I'm like, hold on a minute. This is how it's gonna go down. <laughs> You're gonna invite me to all of them, and I will tell you whether or not I'm coming. How about that? <laughs> yeah. I had, to re re I had to retract that a little bit. I guess, mm -hmm. so no, that's totally how it happens. He's like, hey, they, hey, we're going to go to the show. I'm like, correction, where is it at? What is the weather going to be? I don't know if I'm going. I can't fulfill that promise, but maybe. <laughs> yeah. it, it's, yeah. it's, it's just, and, and we both know this, guys. You know, we, we can say it a million times over, and it's not right. But if it comes out, there, the same thing comes out their mouth, the same word for word, different tone. But then it's then it's correct. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, you're right. I must have said it wrong. I don't know what I was thinking. Of. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I'm like, I'm like, yeah. I, should, I mean, I don't know what I was doing. I should let you plan that. I mean, I'll just, I'll just sit here and be the arm candy, I guess. You know. So. Yeah, exactly, folks. Y'all have heard it here on Rod and Style Radio. If you did not already understand this, then uh, John and I will both reiterate it for you. Just let them say it, because when we say it, it'll be wrong. <laughs> that, that is correct and and as a as a father of uh four daughters um you know when uh one granddaughter and uh being surrounded by women most of my life um yeah i just let it i just come up with the idea i'll say it once and then i'll walk away and then when it, i hear it re re replayed back in a woman's voice i'm like oh now it's it's yeah that's i agree yeah makes yeah, much yeah, more sense right. now makes so much more sense and i i just yep i just put my head down and say yep yeah let's go <laughs> And life is easier. Look how happy you are. 
it's, Sam, it's Sam's bad. writing things here that I cannot say out loud. She has to say this one. So, I'm like, yep. it's now it's now switched in the car world. The men are the arm candy, and the women are like, no, this is what we're doing. This is where we're going. At this time, you're going to eat, and then that, we're going to go to the next thing, and we're not doing anything yep. else in between. Yeah. yeah you know, no. uh, Jess, uh, Jess goes through it the other day, and, uh, you know, I'm, 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 I've, uh, I've got the – the Wisconsin man body up here, you know, so I'm, I'm, I'm six one about two fifty on a light day. And, uh, and, uh, we were talking about the other day and I saw this little meme on Facebook and this guy was in a pool. It used to be the other way around where the guy was always looking at the chick. And that was the thing where a guy's in a pool with his shirt off and it's, and he goes, uh, it says, the Total dad, bod. It's, it's a, <laughs> dad, it's a, it said, uh, the sufferings of having a dad body. He said, Hey, I, my eyes are up here, and this chick's staring at his belly and stuff like that. You know, so I was laughing. And like, so I don't know. I don't know how. I don't know how, but we got to be, we got to be arm candy. So I'm just I'm letting it ride like everything else. So I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm good with it because right now I get driven around everywhere because Sam loves driving her Buick. So I don't I don't have to do a whole lot. She jumps in the in the driver's side, and and uh, we just go. So you know, at that point, I don't even have to think about where we're going. Get in and look pretty. Exactly. <laughs> hey, I'm good at that. <laughs> I, I, I can go through. You just tell me when to, when, when to start talking, and I'm good. And you go, you, I told her, it was, you know, and I, I'm going to throw her on a bus a little bit here, but I just told her that uh, I said, hey, wait, so we got to do a podcast with, with a custom couple. And she's like, well, I wasn't really sure and do whatever. And then all of a sudden, it was, uh, she goes, well, I'll just let you do it because you really like to talk. And I'm like, no. I'm like, where did you get that from? I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> well you know I, all i tell her is that hey it worked on you got you so it's all that matters so it's all on a sales pitch it's all it works that's all i know well it, sam knows that one for sure on this end because you know typically i am the social butterfly you I'd, just didn't give up you just didn't give up you just kept coming back i'm yeah. like well shit <laughs> i guess i gotta try it now yeah, she was uh, forced into dating me. Uh, you were not. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't. Well, that's the story, huh? Yeah. It was one of those things where, like, for five bucks, I'll take my clothes off, but for 20, I'll leave them on. <laughs> Stupid. Hey, I mean, it's, it's you know, that, that that's me. Kind of where, whatever works, you know, it, as long as they can put up with it, it works for me, you know. No, it's good. No, what really happened? He's like, "Hey, you like margaritas and tacos?" I'm like, "Hell yeah, I do." Well, let's go. <laughs> done. Well, um, I'm just saying, yeah, done. One and done. We're good. Come what, on, what, we're what, was, what, what was the? Uh, what was it when we first started dating? You, you found my. Yeah, she always would find my, my stash of chalk covered peanuts. Okay, by find them, you literally had them out on the couch, wide open, and you were stuffing your face with them. So if you <laughs> found them. Well, I mean, as long as the world. Sight? I mean, as long as the world knows. What's going on? Let's just let's just come clean. I mean, when I first started dating Jess, she was, I mean, obviously Jess is beautiful to look at. She's got a great smile and everything. And uh, I looked at her and I said, you know, I said, she's she's really, she's really beautiful. I love her Coke bottle body. I always say it, sexy body. And when I first started dating, I said, you know, it's it's the uh, it's but she had she had, she had no ass. She had, she she had, she had no hind end. It was flat. It was a secretary's butt. But I figured I'm like, okay, I can work with this though. I can feed her. You know, and I, I did, and I did, and now, and now, now it turned out great. I went from a size six to a size ten, <laughs> <laughs> and everybody loves her better. I mean, everybody. What I mean, I mean. There you go. It all, it all. That's how it works. So I mean, you know, I mean, you just. It's, that's how it works. You got to, you got to work with what you got. See, Sam did the same thing to me, but I didn't, I didn't get it in the butt. It all went straight to the, to the belly. So I'm working on that right now. <laughs> Mm -hmm. but it's yeah, also the the south texas cooking that we've got down here is a lot of uh lard all i make is southern cooking so lard it's all and fat. carbohydrates <laughs> <laughs> i i was told i was told if i go on a diet and lose weight she's leaving me hey yeah some, sometimes that that's gonna happen i i don't think sam would leave me but she would definitely start telling me i'm looking sickly yeah, I ain't afraid to tell you that you're looking bad. <laughs> you're looking a little rough. A little rough. Yeah. Well, it's, so, so that means if we take Motor Mania south of Texas, that means we're going to get some, um, as Chuck and Scratch say, we're going to get a lot better a lot better barbecue and a lot of good food down there if we bring the mac and cheese, right? Yeah. 
Oh, oh 100%. Hell yeah. Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, you come to Texas, and uh, if you starve in Texas, it's your own fault. Right. Yeah, we uh we had a couple of barbecue guys up here, and you know they it, there's no comparison. They were they like to compare and say they got the best down here, and but Scratch and Chuck said the same thing. Like, yeah, you come down to Texas and put on a show. We'll, we'll get you a barbecue guy. So. I think I <laughs> oh, definitely. Guys, guys made me into a barbecue snob. Like I'm up here. Like, well, where's the smoke ring? You know. Yep. And, you don't need sauce if it's good brisket like come on now yeah well, that's that that definitely is one of the things down here in texas is that uh you know we're not a, we're not big on sauces of any sort uh no, or any it speaks for itself it's any uh, just right uh, yep. uh, sweet any kind of any anything sweet doesn't need to be anywhere close to a barbecue pit no uh, <laughs> so yeah, we, we definitely pride ourselves in that one, but, uh, you know, definitely come to Texas. We, we would love to put on some sort of a show. Uh, we, I mean, if nothing else, if there is no cars at it, everybody's going to eat good. <laughs> well, and that's what we're doing. And, and, uh, and as long as we're talking about the show, I'll, I'll give everybody a little more of a teaser. We actually had... <coughs> We've had some discussions with the. Everybody knows I'm a huge fan, and I brought them part of our show now. The old school monster trucks that are being restored and still around. You know, obviously we brought Bigfoot and High Roller Two and Steve Elliott with Megatoy and um, Jay Bozart is up here, a good friend of mine. He he redid the Blue Ox up here, and so we love old school monster trucks. I mean, I, I always tell everybody, I said, there's T-shirts that say there's nothing more American than, than baseball, but you know. We did the monster truck parade and all the flags were flying going through. And I said, there should be a new shirt that said there's no, nothing more American than monster trucks, you know, because we had some people with tears in their eyes after that parade on Sunday. It was amazing because they haven't seen something like that in years, you know, going through old fairgrounds like that. Yeah. And so we're actually working and negotiating with some people of bringing on part of Motor Mania to bring on a, like on a Saturday or Sunday, whatever we fit in, you know, if we do a three day show we would bring an old school monster truck show on during the day. Instead of just having the trucks on display like it did the last two years. Again, I can only give my fairgrounds so much because they're still taken back by me turning their fairgrounds into a race park <laughs> and they're letting me do it. <laughs> but, they're, but they're okay with it because I didn't kill nobody yet. and Nobody died and it's all good. So now we want to bring in for 2023 the uh, uh, old school monster truck show to wherever we're traveling through and that's the big talk of going south. And we've had a couple drivers um, just reach out to me even today and yesterday about bringing that on. So it's so we're ready to bring something on to this to the country hasn't seen in 30 years. And that's really what we want to do is bring it all for everybody. As something for every, everybody to see, the kids and everybody. Uh, that would be absolutely wild. Along with the idea of doing that, uh, I'm sure your insurance does not want me suggesting any more uh, craziness to you, but I do so. <laughs> <laughs> but going along with the idea of like the the original style monster truck show, have you thought about doing any any kind of uh, daredevils jumping through fire rings, jumping over school buses, anything like that? A hundred percent since day one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've uh, I've had. I grew up with, you know, I think I told you before, you know, I'm, I'm a, a 70s kid, so I grew up in, you know, I'm 47 this year, 48 this year, but uh, we grew up in the days of Spanky Spangler and all that stuff traveling the country, and Evil Knievel was, you know, when I was a kid, he was just kind of shutting down because I was, you know, late or late uh, 70s or 80s when that all kind of died out, but I would just love to have the, the cars going through the ramps and, the and you know, whether it's a pile of boxes or something with fireworks and just bringing it back the way it used to be where the crowds would just go through and two of the big, the two of the biggest icons that have taught me so much in the last two years, I must say is definitely Jim and Julie Kramer, a Bigfoot and Bob Chandler, a Bigfoot. You know, we mm -hmm. just and I were very blessed to go down to their Christmas party and be part of their family. Just a great, awesome people to teach me so many things. And they taught me to run this like a business. You give the people what they want, but you have to stay on top of it every day. Don't finish off the first show and say, oh, well, you know, we'll take off for six months, do whatever. The reason why people like Bigfoot and, and are were 47 year icons this year and never sold out and never anything because he never stopped. He never stopped innovating and thinking. And every show they went to, 
they would bring monster truck shows with sled pulls and then they'd combine it with car shows and drag races. And it was literally a three ring circus, no matter where I was when I was a kid and I couldn't get enough. You were tired. And we had so many people tell us this. One of them was our good friend, Chad. He has this amazing, uh, pro street Malibu, um, called top gun. And because we have two live stages of bands too at motor mania, wherever we go, it's a, it's a total music festival too. He said, it's pretty impressive. Most of the car shows you go to, if you go to a church parking lot show or a bar or restaurant, whatever it is, people get there at 7, they give the awards away at 11, and people are out of there by like 1, 2 o'clock. You know, yeah. maybe at the late. So I knew it was always going to be a challenge for me to do motor media if I open up my gates at 10 a.m. on a Saturday. And if I can still kick people out at 10 p.m. on Saturday night that are there all day, I've accomplished something. And... Each time I've had Motor Mania on a Saturday or Sunday night, we've kicked out hundreds, if not thousands, on the day to close. And that's, we want to bring more. I just, every year I think of what, what more can I bring to it. And if you, like you're saying with a, a, the car exploding and the car going on the ramp or a rollover contest or any of those fun things to do with the car on fire, I mean, I'd love to see it all. I'd love to bring it all back, whatever we can bring. Oh, so yeah. And then if oh, you have the, the if you have the space to to do it, then do a demolition derby, uh, you know, just bring back all of the old school, you know, uh, ways to bring you know butts to the seats in the crowd, you know. Yep, yep. And we, when we used to do them at the fairgrounds, and well, see, when I was younger, that's why everybody asked me to say, like, "Why do you keep? Why do you go to your fairgrounds instead of a racetrack?" Because when we grew up, that's where that's where these shows were. They were always at the fairgrounds. There were no big racetracks we went to. It was always craziness at the fairgrounds. And somehow, whether it's political, whether it's whatever county government thing, it all kind of got separated and segregated. I hate to even use the word, but we started separating the shows, you know? Yeah. Um, the rotten custom culture broke off from the muscle car guys and the monster trucks and the, you know, the, the new tuner guys. Everybody separated from each other for some odd reason over the years. And, um, you know, and we're just trying to bring it back. We're, and we're, we're proving to everybody that we can do it. I think, you know, I think Chuck and them even lined up against a, a Tesla or something in the drag strip. It was pretty fun. <laughs> oh, I got to see that. I got to see that. <laughs> you know, I mean, we're, we're, I mean, and people were loving it. They were, I mean, they just can't get enough of it. And that's, that's when we know we're doing something right. You know, it's, it's not the same old deal. And one big thing is we always tell everybody, that we still support, love and support each and every one of these shows that are specifying in rockabilly or specifying in muscle car or monster truck things. We don't hate or not support any of those shows. We, without them, we wouldn't have anything either. So it's it's what they do. Um, that's we, we just really want to make sure everybody knows that we, we love all these shows. We, we still go and support all of them. We even share them on our pages. And that is so cool. John and Jess, we appreciate y'all being on the on the show with us again and you know, it, like giving us the the update as to how y'all y'all did cuz we were excited to have you uh the last time, you know, talking about, you know, right before the show happened. And uh now to hear that it's just growing, that that's a, you know, that's a big deal for us cuz we're we're going to be excited to come out to the next one. Or the next several that happen, in case y'all start doing them in multiple spots. So, thank you so much for being on the podcast with us. Thank you very much for having us, Jess. I was just gonna say thank you for having us. You you stole my words. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, what we like to say is thank you very much. We're always welcome to have us on any time, and stay tuned. Rumor has it, um, the 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 first show in the south will be this September in 2022 here oh. um, with a destination yet to be set. They called us out and want us to do it yet this year. So stay tuned and, and we'll keep in touch you too. And as soon as I get something locked in, we'll, we'll have to get back on and announce what we're going to do. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You get that locked in. We will get it out to all of our guests, all of our co uh, customers. Listeners. All, all our customers now. All of our customers. All our, yeah, all, our cust all, all the future customers. I love it. No, we'll get that out to everybody that's <laughs> listening to Rod and Style Radio. Uh, folks, if you're listening to this on Apple 
or on Spotify, please go and leave us a rating and review because that helps us, you know, put all of this together and it tells Chuck that we're actually doing our job right. Um, <laughs> yeah, attaboy, Chuck. <laughs> John, if you would, one more time, give us the websites and stuff where we can find uh, everything going on with Motor Mania. Of course, of course. You can always go to our main Facebook page where most of our followers are on. Uh, Motor Mania, that's our main Facebook page. Otherwise, you can go to our main website, themotormania.com, and you can also follow us on YouTube, Rumble, TikTok, Instagram, and, of course, Facebook for our social media videos, um, posts, pictures, er any updates that's going on there. And, of course, now you can start following us on Motor Mania and upload any of your pictures, videos that you've had from our events or even what you're building in your own backyard. We love to share them. We love to see them. People are now sharing their own builds, even the stuff that they're doing in their backyard. We love to get – this isn't about us. It's about the fans and followers and this culture and this hobby. We, we made this little goofy joke years back, uh, making the hobby great again for a little spoof. And we there's people that are doing things in their own garage and trying to do their own church shows. or I always say church shows on a Sunday afternoon. Share them with us. We'll put them on our social media because our followers are your followers. Without this, we wouldn't do it. So – Please follow us, and we'll and we'll we'll good we'll we'll promote you as well. Oh, that's awesome, Sam. What? Sam's Why gonna give us the. Why you gotta look at me like God? You <laughs> hated you put me on the spot. I'm always it's, messing it's with her. Like, he's just pause. he's just he's just like literally staring at me like Sam. Like what? Like everything has been said. God. Everything. Everything has been said. There's Jesus. nothing left. This will be the last episode ever. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> this will be the last episode ever. The so the last thing I just want to throw out there is Anthony and Bobby Smith that they're gonna be listening to this. The rumor has it was we're heading to Tennessee in September. We can't tell the name of the track or where we're going to yet, but uh, stay tuned and uh, for the next chapter. Awesome. Well, in all things custom, keep it cool and don't forget, stay wild.